pour essayer de les penser, de les préparer et de les porter. Un immense merci à toutes et tous, à toutes les équipes de l'ESA, vous pouvez être fiers, et l'Europe a joué un rôle majeur dans l'aventure spatiale et elle continuera de jouer ce rôle. Merci à toutes et tous pour les combats d'hier, d'aujourd'hui et pour ceux de demain. À très bientôt. General Roy Gibson shaped ESA's character and set it on an ambitious trajectory. He's since had a number of successors. Eric Criscard, Reimer Lust, Jean-Jacques Luton, Antonio Rodotta, Jean-Jacques Dordain, and Jan Werner. And in 2021, after dedicating over three decades to advancing European space science and policy, both at the European Commission and here at ESA, Dr. Josef Aschbacher was appointed as the Director General at ESA. Under his leadership, ESA is not only advancing scientific excellence, but also strengthening Europe's strategic role on the global space stage. Please welcome to this stage, Dr. Josef Aschbacher. Thank you, Luisa, and a uh, very warm welcome from my side, uh, dear ministers, uh, excellencies, commissioner, council chair, ESA delegations, ladies and gentlemen, and also a big thank you to the President of the Republic of France for such a wonderful speech uh, as we have just heard. It is just so beautiful to stand here in front of you. Today is really a historic day for Europe's space sector, for, your, for the European Space Agency, but really for Europe. ESA's journey, as we have also heard before, began not far from here, in the French Ministry of Foreign Affairs, 50 years ago, when 10 member states put pen to paper and signed the ESA Convention. Not just any document, but a legal masterpiece that would profoundly shape the continent's future, achieving what uh, many thought was impossible at that time. I would like to really extend my special thanks uh, to the government of France for hosting us here in Paris for all these years. In an interesting parallel to today, ESA was born out of the need for European autonomy. As you may remember, in 1963, President de Gaulle and Chancellor Adenauer signed an agreement to build Symphony, which was a telecommunication satellite the United States uh, agreed to launch it under the condition that it is used not for commercial purposes. And this gave rise to Ariane 1, a fully European built and operated launcher, and with it, the birth of ESA. And once up and running, ESA rapidly expanded from the first science satellites in 1970 five to meteorology and telecommunications in 77, to astronauts in the 80s. Thank you, all the astronauts, sir, for being here. It's always so wonderful to have you with us. To Earth observation, navigation in, in the 90s, and planetary safety more recently. Copernicus and Galileo, the flagships uh, we built together with the European Union, is an excellent example where we have demonstrated very visibly how the European Union, the European Space Agency, can work together in the best possible way, always under the guidance of our member states, shoulder to shoulder, to create world-class programs. But ESA also had to learn some harsh lessons along the way. In 1996, with uh, Ariane 5 exploding in its inaugural flight and having four cluster satellites on board, or in 2005, when Kaisat 1 was lost due to a Russian launch failure, or in 2016, when Schiaparelli had what we would call a hard landing on the Martian surface. But each time we rose, we dusted off, and came back stronger. Ariane 5 eventually captured 50% of the global commercial market, and after 
the difficult period and some delays, RM6 rose like Phoenix to the skies in its inaugural flight on the 9th of July last year. There have also been political decisions that one may regret today. Hermes, a reusable space plane that uh, would have flown European astronauts, was abandoned in 1992. But, if I may quote the great Taylor Swift, <laughs> time doesn't it give some perspective. This one was for my daughter. <laughs> Even through the hard times, and yes, sometimes heartbreak, there was one common thread. Together, we exceeded expectations and delivered successes upon successes. We broke ground in science and technology. ESA missions often were the only, the first, the furthest, and the best. We were the first ever to land on Titan. We were the first ever to land on a comet. We were enabling Nobel Prizes and helped answer some of the universe's most pressing questions. Today, ESA is strong. Its budget is expanding, breaking records at the last ministerial conference in 2022, which is a sign that the increasing relevance of space is really recognized by our ministers, and I really would like to express my sincere thanks to all our member states for these opportunities you're giving us as you hope. ESA delivers. Last year, we launched a record 13 satellites, the first Ariane 6 and a returned Vega C flight. We re-established Europe's access to space while simultaneously preparing a new generation of launchers. From 10 founding members and an equivalent budget of 360 million in 1975, we are now 23 and with an annual budget of 7.8 billion. To this day, the convention remains our guiding star. We have grown into one of the world's leading space agencies, respected, capable, and unfailingly ambitious. Today, we manage about 60% of public space funding in Europe. Last year, we attracted uh, private funds in the order of 1.5 billion, a record as well. Our industry is strong and competitive on the global stage. Still, Europe faces numerous geopolitical challenges. Only last week, ESA member states opened a new chapter, adopting a program to support European resilience from space, prepared closely with Commissioner Cobelius and his team. I must thank you. Commissioner for this excellent cooperation. Europe, however, needs to step up further. Space is strategic, it offers economic opportunities and provides indispensable services to our citizens and our economies. But space is also inspiring, it unites and it gives purpose. We need new dreams and visions. Space offers these and ESA is ready to lead. We recently published ESA Strategy 2040. Let's be visionary and imagine what ESA might achieve in the year 2040. We will land ESA astronauts on the moon, establish a lunar economy, and conduct research on the far side of the moon. We will drill into the surface of Mars and perhaps find traces of ancient or maybe still existing life. We will launch a spacecraft to land on Enceladus to search again for traces of life on Saturn's icy moon. But first and foremost, we will use space technology to make life better for our people on planet Earth, to safeguard our natural resources, mitigate effects of climate change, protect our citizens and help defending our continent. Our remarkable journey was made possible by countless individuals, thanks to ESA's really incredibly talented workforce. And I would like to pay tribute to all my colleagues and all my teams for the incredible work, from the directors to some of you here in the room, but many of you working very hard in what we sometimes call the machine room. Thank our 
member states for their wise guidance and leadership. And really, without you, member states, and again, many of you, all of you, being represented here, this is such a pleasure to work together. It is not always easy, it is a challenge, but what we have achieved is just incredible. But this strength lies also in very powerful partnerships with our international partners, and thank you, colleagues from the international space agencies, from Japan, from the US, from Singapore, and several other countries. Thank you so much for the long-standing partnerships and fruitful cooperations we have. But also, we have a very strong industry. Again, remarkable what industry can do. When ESA was founded, I was a child, growing up in a very small village in Austria, in the mountains. Like so many young people, dreaming of the wonders out there in the vastness of space. Today is one of the proudest moments of my life. I'm privileged, I'm honored, and I'm humbled to lead such a wonderful agency under the guidance of our member states. A very happy 50th birthday to ESA. May it continue to thrive and prosper for another 50 years and more. Thank you so much. <laughs>